Forspoken is one of those unforgettable adventures. I know it will be months before I forget this game, and I want to start now. It's another of this year's releases that is making it very easy to put together the Game of the Year nominee list in December by virtue of nearly everything being broken or a poorly designed mess. I'll give Square Enix credit for stepping out of their comfort zone of spiky-haired anime protagonists in favor of actual homo sapiens in the real world for once, but then I'm inclined to push them right back into it because it was clearly a mistake. Square Enix needs to be quarantined from western game design trends like it's a virulent strain of creativity killing bacteria. Their attempt at crafting a story in line with what they imagine was trending in the western market is as soulless as having a conversation with your own reflection. In contemporary storytelling, the most menacing and abhorrent force is often modern-day skullduggery, patriarchy, and capitalism. For some, fighting a demon lord in a fantasy world seems easier to overcome than navigating the modern world. If this scenario leaves you scratching your head, buckle up. It's time to dive into the realm of popular Japanese literary genres, specifically isekai, the literary equivalent of reheating the same frozen pizza over and over again. Isekai is all about whisking a modern-day protagonist, typically a hopeless, directionless soul, to a generic fantasy world where they are given respect, save the world, and amass a harem of adoring women who fall for their alarm clock that fell to go off level charisma. Forget therapy and self-improvement, all you need to be your best self is a world filled with chaos and peril, plus godlike powers that somehow don't alienate everyone around you. I never really saw the point of creating a world where the struggle against an easily identifiable evil force, if you are then going to give your protagonist the power to easily solve the problem on day one, while erasing their personal issues the moment they enter a world where they lack a social security number. But the draw of any isekai story is that the new world must be more fascinating than the protagonist's mundane life. It's essentially the only thing you have to accomplish when it comes to escapism. Does Forspoken deliver? In a word, no. The fantasy realm they've crafted is a little more than the American Midwest with a sprinkle of fairy dust. There are no fantastic creatures to be found here, just zoo animals with a sign of evil mist. Athia is not a world I can imagine escaping to because it's basically just a road trip on low-grade LSD away. So, with the essential part of the isekai equation botched, did they at least nail the harem of gorgeous women? Nope. But hey, every important character is female, so there's that. Spare a thought for Ella Belinska who plays Frey. After the recent Resident Evil Netflix show fiasco, she's now part of this mess. I can't even tell if she's a bad actress or just cursed with terrible roles. Note to her agent. Stop accepting video game gigs, please. We first meet our charming protagonist, Frey Holland, in the midst of a court hearing where she receives a mere slap on the wrist from a judge with a heart of gold despite Frey's grand larceny charge. So already the beaten down by society plot point crumbles under the weight of its own inconsistency, as Frey finds herself on the winning side of the justice system, which could, and very likely would, have treated a repeat offender far more harshly. Three strikes laws aren't supposed to be two freebies and the third is the actual one they get you on. Yet, even with Lady Lux smiling down upon her, Frey speaks with everyone she encounters like she's being forced to circumcise them with her teeth. She's a young, attractive, and talented individual. She's already been handed a pretty fortunate hand that most of us will never experience. The only real problem that she hasn't caused for herself was being born an orphan, and given her above attributes, it's very unlikely she would have gone unadopted. I'm going to reach a bit for this next part, but I feel it's fair given that Square Enix is a history of borrowing ideas and wholesale characters and lines from Star Wars. I finished the game before I ever put it together myself, but the main character of Forspoken, Frey, is essentially Rey from the new Star Wars trilogy. Their names even rhyme. Both start out unhappy with their situation, longing for a life of adventure somewhere else, both get dragged into a larger conflict, both have a mysterious birth with absent parents, and both of them are unlikable people that executives were convinced people would resonate with. The only real difference is that Frey swears more. Where is Frey's attorney during this hearing? Don't tell me she turned that option down. Before we begin, Perhaps you should reacquaint yourself with your many previous encounters with the law. The hearing is a bizarre deviation from court procedure, with Frey instructed to silently read her file mid-proceeding. Most of it has nothing to do with her current charges. One of the documents lists her previous arrests, and the others consist of a baby picture, her high school diploma, and a news clipping of her being found abandoned under the Holland Bridge, serving only to ham-fistedly shove her sad backstory in her faces. And yes, she was named after a bridge, because the state has no other choice but to name orphans after the location where they were found like some pet. People who stayed in New York for South Alfred Holland, defendant charged with attempted grand larceny. How do you plead? Not guilty, your honor. Why are you here, Frey? Grand larceny? Is that who you really are? No, it's just, I needed the cash for... Never mind. Frey pleads innocent, but then admits to the crime. This is why you have a lawyer present. Also, her reason for needing the money is that she wanted to have a big bag of money. Are you familiar with the persistent felony offender law, also known as the three strikes law? Wait, you can't do that. I never hurt anyone. Just yourself. You have two previous felony thefts, and with this new one, your grand total will be three. 
Frey is only 21 years old, which means since turning 18 she has committed a felony per year, seemingly serving no prison time for either of the first two. And now, with her third felony arrest, and with no reason to believe Frey will be anything but a repeat offender, the judge will proceed to let her off with a community service sentence. This could put you away for a very, very long time. You have so much potential! What potential? According to the documents you had Frey read, she's nothing but a no-good petty thief, and everything I learned about her after this proves she's only looking out for herself. I'm going to release you under the condition you serve 120 hours of community service. If only all court proceedings were over and done with in five minutes when a not guilty plea is registered. After leaving court, Frey returns a dropped phone to its owner, proving she's not a real criminal. No, she just prefers to improve her life using other people's money rather than getting a job. Square Enix made a modern-day RPG set in New York City, and it wasn't a Parasite Eve remake. Frey is assaulted by a gang of street lesbians right down the block from the courthouse, demanding Frey hand over the car she was stealing for them like she's hiding it in her back pocket and wasn't just released from custody for trying to steal it. Just because the court let her go doesn't mean they let her keep the car she stole. Frey conveniently went to court with a pocket full of sand that she now uses to escape from the gang members. The one gang member armed with a gun seems to forget her weapon's purpose, opting instead to watch Frey's attempts to climb a stairwell. Flipping off armed gang members who already want you dead through the non-bulletproof safety of a chain link fence is a decision that should end poorly. If this game were playing by a proper isegai rules, that was the bus that should have run Frey over and given her a one-way ticket to being reborn in another world. The gang members apparently lack object permanence, baffled by Frey's sudden disappearance after she's blocked momentarily from sight by the bus, unable to comprehend that maybe she just ducked around the corner. Plugging in those rope lights also turned on the ceiling lights in this abandoned building Frey is squatting in that should have no electricity. Of course Alice in Wonderland would be Frey's favorite book. Attaching yourself to a piece of literary history is what every poor copy of it tries to do by placing that history on the mantle and pointing towards it. Curiouser and curiouser, cried Alice. I wish I could find that rabbit hole and tumble away to Wonderland. Goddamn girl, you just live in New York. If you don't want to live there anymore, buy a bus ticket. All you have to pack is several pairs of shoes and a cat. The police clearly never checked Frey's living space after her arrest, where they would have stumbled upon her comically large duffel bag of cash. You were just arraigned today for stealing a car. If you already had enough saved up to leave town, why did you steal a car for the gang in the first place? Had the judge not been lenient, you'd be spending the next 10 years in prison. Frey's New York escape plan lacks a destination. What's the difference between being homeless in New York and being homeless elsewhere? Here's a thought. Use that big bag of money to improve your life right now instead of aimlessly wandering off without a plan. Especially now when leaving means you'll be in violation of your court order for community service. Was Frey caught stealing a car, locked up and then arraigned in one night because her cat was in the abandoned apartment she's squatting in and no one would have been around to feed it otherwise? Frey wakes up in the middle of the night to find the building ablaze, sent by the thugs who also took the time to write a note on her window that they knew she would wake up in time to see instead of dying in the fire, they said. Gotta find Homer first. Frey's only concern is her cat Homer, which is understandable, but when it would only take a second to pick up the duffel bag full of money right next to the bed before searching for her cat instead of leaving it to burn, I have to have a good laugh at how dumb this setup is. I guess Frey never heard of a bank account either, and planned a journey across the country with an easily stolen duffel bag of cash. Judge Bird, who sentenced Frey to community service, is apparently on close enough terms now to take Frey's cat home with her, and also not question Frey over the obvious signs that she's fleeing town while on probation. Frey, wait. If you're in trouble, I can help you, Frey. Happy holidays. Why would you turn down help from a judge? That's the kind of assistance that can genuinely turn your life around. Frey's life is only difficult because of her own thick-headedness. Frey was so distraught that she decided to climb up a street sign that reflects her current state of existence. I like to think she turned down several other signs to sit on before coming to the one named the Crossroads Hotel. It's Christmas and Frey's birthday that's supposed to make it extra sad and also create the dumbest Jesus Christ allegory I've ever witnessed. At her lowest moment, Frey notices a golden armband in a window and decides to steal it. I'm beginning to see where all of her troubles come from. Based on what you learned later concerning how this cuff got here, I have to assume it's been lying in view of anyone walking past the window for 21 years, and no one took an interest in it until now. This cuff opens a portal that sucks Frey into another world where no one seasons their food. Her plight in our world is abandoned just as it seemed interesting. You had parkour in New York for an open world adventure, along with a story that could have played off the difficulties and anxieties many people feel in modern life. Being tossed for a generic fantasy world where the bad guys are easily identifiable, while running around empty fields blasting elemental magic bullets at safari animals that can't even catch you. This game has clearly gone through several rewrites in the near decade it's been developed. The first time it was ever shown as Project Athia, it seemed to focus on a world where modern tech technology and esoteric magic existed in tandem and honestly seemed much more intriguing. But that was the issue with his now dead development studio within Square Enix. The only consistency they ever managed was spending a decade working on a game until they finally released an unfinished project that bared little in common with the original much better vision. 
Oh, hello, yes. So oh, perhaps you're smarter than you look. No. Yes. N no. Yes. You, the one talking to me right now, are this... Cuff? From here on, just assume that any sassy yet helpful object with an English accent is probably the bad guy. You add Wheatley and Portal 2, Charles and Atomic Heart, and now Cuff and Forspoken. And how exactly do you plan on getting out? I believe. It's baffling how a talking bracelet can somehow produce audible lip-smacking sounds. At times, the game will force you to stand still in order to have a conversation with Cuff. There's no reason we couldn't move toward our destination and have the same discussion. It's not like there's another person Frey needs to maintain eye contact with, or anything in the environment that would distract you. Climbing that wall might be our best option. Frey, parkour expert, needs a talking and mobile Cuff to inform her that climbing over a wall will indeed get her out of the room. Hey, look at you. I'd be careful. Come on. Don't be shy. Seriously, I wouldn't. Let's just keep moving. Why are you so freaked out by this fella? Teleported to a magical world with dragons and where jewelry can speak to you, and Frey's first instinct is to walk up to the giant wild animal and pet it. Even if it weren't corrupted by the break, it would have still been a dumb move. Did I just do that? Well, definitely with my assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just moved shit with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just move shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. No, it's less awkward apologizing to your neighbor for backing over his dog than to listen to this game's dialogue. The writing in this game is so horrendously bad that attempting to address all the examples of it would be like trying to sit from a fire hose. Just know that the true amount of cringeworthy lines is too large to address here. This game bills itself as an RPG with an emphasis on elemental magic, but it may as well have been a twin-stick bullet hell shooter. All of your attacks consist of dousing enemies in a volley of spells until they die. There's no mana or limit, so combat lacks any sense of death or strategy, other than holding down a button to automatically dodge attacks. Despite all the flash and particles, elemental attacks kill at the same rate as a lifetime of eating fried chicken. Nothing feels efficient enough to you, so you end up cycling through all of your spell options per fight and still come away disappointed. What the hell? What is this weird feeling? There seems to be some sort of malignant miasma in the air. If it isn't Square Enix's favorite plot device, Malignant Miasma, it's called The Break this time. It's never satisfying because you can't understand and relate to Evil Fog. The Break is so prevalent that the entire world seems to have been consumed by it, all except for one city, for unexplained reasons at that. Frey is the only one immune to it while everyone else is driven mad and turned into a monster if exposed. It seems to only serve as an excuse for why the open world is so empty. You'll spin the game battling it by taking on the Tauntus, who have caused it, and the game will assure you that you are pushing it back region by region, but I never saw any positive effect on my progress. Parkour as the main way of getting from point A to point B strikes me as a confusing choice, because for most of the game you are in completely natural environments, with only a small hub city and a few enemy strongholds to break it up. Now let me ask you, of all the parkour videos you've ever watched, how many of them were set in rock-strewn wastelands? Chances are all of them were inside a city. Parkour is inefficient enough in a place designed for it. In an open plain you can just run normally and get where you're going without flipping off of every rock you come across. After a terribly awkward fight against a dragon, it picks Frey up and carries her to the one remaining city, where it vanishes until the very end of the game when it shows up to explain why it's important, but for some reason couldn't be bothered with explaining that right now. It's unintentionally ironic, because this makes the second time the same character has dropped Frey in an unfamiliar area without explaining anything to her. The hell? Move, monster! Hey, the fuck you calling monster? The monster speaks! Yeah, of course I speak! Put your pointy stick away, asshole! For a moment, I thought this game was having its fantasy Europeans react to a black lady appearing in their midst as they realistically would. But no, they just think she's a monster because she walked out of a break infested area. This is a particular world building problem I've come across again and again. If you are going to have a diverse cast of characters in a medieval European inspired fantasy setting, meaning not a bunch of white people, why would you then make the setting and culture of the world they inhabit entirely European? There are several non-white characters in the game, but they act like white Europeans regardless. There's been no cultural exchange in this world, a fantasy setting with diverse City has to reflect a mixing of cultures that has occurred over centuries. Unless you were trying to tell me that all these people with different skin tones and accents are all somehow native to this region and therefore all share the same culture. Why are they speaking English? It's my experience that languages share commonalities across many dimensions. So all dimensions speak English? Not everyone speaks English in our own world, and several of these people have regional accents. Accents are generally the result of speaking a second language. My name is Frey Holland. I do not know how I got here. I am exhausted. I am starving, and all I want is to go home. Both Odin King and Councilman Janesh have made very compelling arguments. Council is divided. Therefore, 
There shall be no blood spilled today. But, heed my warning, child. If you prove a threat, we will have no choice but to eliminate you. This is for a second time being dragged before a court in this game, and this one ends exactly the way the first one did. She is thrown in prison this time, but then is let right back out with zero consequences. Her vestments are strange, where is she from? Do you really get to call someone's clothes strange when you are dressed like that? Athia only seems to have two inspirations, the architecture of an uninspired Minecraft build and the fashion style of Balenciaga. Get up, get up, get up! Look, I am imprisoned. A million miles from home in a Ren Faire nightmare. Going from a world where the criminal justice system treats her like a fragile flower to a realm where you can be executed on a whim and she still gets the equivalent of being sent to her room. She really has no reason to be this down. Oh. Mm. Mm. When you have magic capable of annihilating monsters, the most logical escape attempt is to give the door a gentle shove, then give up. If memory serves me right, you weren't exactly in the best of spirits when our paths first crossed. I'm not sure why you're so determined to return. You only witness Frey walk into an abandoned building you were laid out inside of for 21 years and pick you up. How did you figure out her state of mind from just that? The woman who spoke up for Frey back in front of the council releases Frey from her cell. She walked in after putting the guards asleep with a drug pastry. Frey has been in prison for less than an afternoon before being freed by someone who recognizes that she can save all of them and wants to be her friend. Why must this poor woman struggle so much in her life? Nice digs. Some schmancy houses. This is where the nobility live. Ah, yes. The Upper East Side. Sipal, the last city standing amidst a sea of miasma, miraculously remains uncorrupted. It's like an exclusive gated community at the end of the world, complete with an inexplicable upper and lower class. Because even in the apocalypse, you can't escape social stratification. Auden lured Frey with a promise of food, only to provide a single apple. Bon appetit, bitch. I guess those pastries Auden made for the guards were just too good for Frey. The circle of bending light, the rushing sound. That's what brought you here, yes? You want to go back home, don't you? I may be able to help you. Auden somehow knows that Frey came through a portal to this world and is willing to help her return to it if she helps save her homeland. Honestly, at this point, if Auden has any idea how to get back to New York, they'd all be better off just relocating there. Frey doesn't need to eat an apple to look like an asshole. She simply is one, and it can't be missed. I want you to find his research notes on the break. They are in the break, right? Auden will hand over all of her father's portal research if Frey retrieves this separate research on the break, because who wouldn't stash their important documents in two completely different places? Here's Frey, nabbing an apple in the city on the brink of destruction, even when she could get food from Auden if she just asked. No pity pass for you. Food's scarce, after all. After being warned by the council that the threat of execution did not make trouble, Frey's escape from prison will never matter. Guards won't arrest her, and I even had a conversation with one of the council members from her trial. Escaped criminals roam the streets and still you do not cease your racket. Psst, lady. The escaped criminal you're looking for? She's standing right next to you. How the hell do you get out of this dump anyway? I know a way. If you climb over that wall there, that should help you get to where you want to be. Climbing over the wall gets you out of the city. Who knew? Well, Frey, parkour expert, needed a child to enlighten her apparently. Well, that certainly makes me question why Frey needed help breaking out of prison earlier if she can just blow doors down with her magic. In this RPG, you can change only your cape and bizarrely your nails. Magical fingernail extensions are the key to power in this world. You'll need to enter sealed dungeons and fight massive bosses to unlock new nail polish styles with rich lore behind them. There's a fine line between embracing female-centric themes and becoming a parody of them. Frey doesn't find any journals on the break, but she does find Auden's father, Roby, into the tower. He's the only human to not be completely turned monster by the break, and despite being here alone for years with no way to get food or enough sanity to even produce it, he's still alive. Magically animated Tanta soldiers show up at the tower, somehow aware of Frey's presence. How they figure that out is a mystery worth pondering. The only person who knew where she was headed is Auden, which at the time of me playing it made me suspect Auden was up to something, but she had no hand in it. Upon returning to Sepal, Frey overhears that Tanta Sila has shown up and is looking for her, which means that Tanta Sila was somehow aware that Frey arrived in Athia, knew how special she was and somehow a threat, knew she had been locked up and who released her, and even knew Frey was at Robian's tower earlier, but is now completely clueless on where she is and needs to torture Auden and demand the city hand her over. After beating the knight that Tanta Sila was using as a stand-in for herself, Frey learns that the little pickpocket girl was killed in the fighting. So now it's time for some good old revenge over this character she met a total of two times, because this little girl was just like her. I don't think Frey has even considered the implications of this world. Nearly everyone is dead and transformed into break zombies. All of these kids are orphans like her, but only this one stirs her to action. 
The council locked up Frey on the mere suspicion of brake corruption. Meanwhile, Robian, clearly suffering from the brake, strolls around town freely. I'm not sure if this double standard is racism or just inconsistent writing. Vush? Huh? Vush? 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 <laughs> yes, Vush! I need a Vush back home! Where I came from! After I kill this crazy lady. I feel for anyone suffering from Alzheimer's, or in this case, break, but they do not make interesting NPCs to have conversations with and receive quests from. Catch! Whoa! What is this? And who are you? I'm the archivist. Auden, tell me you were clever. How do you not know what a book is? No, I know what a book is. Ah, 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 ah. You don't look like an archivist. You don't look like a hero. It feels like Forspoken was hoping to catch some of that strong female character that so many games and movies are chasing. But all the characters are so horrible. It just makes me wonder if writers are confused strong female character with mean-spirited bitches. Before you go, I would suggest that you learn all that you can about the Tantas. The archives, full of books about them. You knew the woman. You used to make weapons for her. How about you just tell her about Tonta Siley yourself? She's not studying rocket science. It's like a, a thing that lets you talk to people far away or uh, turn what you see into pictures. Whoa! Does that mean it could turn what you see into pictures of outside support? These kids instantly grasp the concept of photos without having it explained to them. And let's not forget the real question. How on earth is Frey charging your smartphone in this world? The open world gameplay of Forspoken is your typical uninspired take on the genre. You have an objective plopped all the way on the other side of the map, and in between a bunch of copy-pasted side activities you can choose to take on during your parkour journey through it, all the while squinting your eyes and daring the game to hit you with a level cap once you reach your objective having passed all the boring side tasks, and you'll do this three times in total before the game is over. That's really all there is left. Frey beats one Tonta, then something will happen that forces her to head to the region of the next Tonta to confront them, and rinse repeat until the game unceremoniously decides to end. Inside Tonta Silas Castle, Frey comes across a hallway full of paintings of the Tontas, all of which Frey and Kaf proceed to remark on, negatively. Except for one who Frey seems to feel a connection to for some reason. And if you can't really see the obvious plot twist coming, let me remind you of a few details. Frey is an orphan that was found under the Holland Bridge. She has elemental magic powers, which coincidentally all the Tontas also possess. So of course the Tonta in that painting is her future tax accountant. But you and your goons don't care who you hurt. You killed a child. A little girl. She did, but I think the fact that Sila and the other Tondas are responsible for the break, which has seemingly killed everyone except for a handful of people living in the one remaining city, is more damning than her accidentally killing a young child. You will burn for humiliating me! A game can sometimes be saved by good villains. The Tonta's performance ranges from high schoolers in their school stages production to security camera footage of a public Karen freakout. Whoa. I think he just leveled up. Upon defeating Sila, her own magical cuff falls off and you get her elemental fire powers. Frey even marks the occasion by stating they leveled up, a term I doubt she's familiar with along with the dubs, since technically this is a new weapon. All the actual leveling is done by collecting glowing light that litters the map to purchase magic spells in the skill tree. Thanks to you, the break had stopped advancing. So the break stopped advancing. With the city still engulfed and no one able to leave, it's hard to tell. So why is it treated as progress? There's a celebration at the tavern. Given that this city is all that remains and they have a pitiful garden for producing food, no one should be eating well, and certainly not enough to even throw a party full of food in Frey's honor. Your next important objective is to talk to the townspeople and listen to them praise you. I'm dead serious. You cannot continue until these people have finished polishing your ego. The corruption is coming from my wallet! It's here it's a fall! During the party to celebrate Frey's victory that has seemingly caused the break to stop advancing, a man enters the pub and screams about how the break is advancing into the city. If the break had entered the city this entire time, what has been stopping it until now? This destruction is because of you, demon. Councilman Janesh blames Frey and tries to attack her before being restrained and arrested by the rest of the council, because Frey is simply better than him, so his reasonable argument is ignored. Before you came, the people had resigned themselves to their fate, cowering in fear of the Tantas, held captive by their madness. But now, because of you, they're starting to think they might just stand a chance. No, they're not. They're all huddling on the steps of the upper city and wailing about all hope being lost. Their situation is actually worse now that Frey has intervened. You need to kill the other Tantas. End this once and for all. What? The wound cannot begin to heal until the bleeding stops. No, that's... 
That's straight up murder. I'm not killing any anyone else. No one in the city does a thing to help Frey or even consider her own goals. But now anytime Frey expresses that desire, she is shamed for it. I don't give a shit. Just leave me the fuck alone. I've played plenty of games where the protagonist is a teenager, and none of them have ever acted as authentically as Frey. The problem being that she's 21. Frey has a nightmare where she overhears all the people she just told to screw off talking about how much he sucks for not killing their enemies for them. Dreams and hallucinations will always tell you how much you suck, but this should be a common dream of Frey's, since telling people to screw off is her go-to response. That wound Frey received that made her collapse stops being a concern after this, and she's right back to parkouring over mountains. I fear his condition is worsening. Bob, you gotta keep it together. Shouldn't the break turn Robian into a mindless monster instead of killing him? I kept waiting for an explanation for why he's affected so differently from everyone else, but they never got around to it. He has not long left. What? No, he can't give in to it now. What about the Ballow stuff? It could certainly stabilize him. The resin of the Ballow tree can suppress the break. This is how poorly understood this important element of the world is. We don't know what the break is, we don't know why it affects some differently or why Taunt is or immune, and now there's a special tree that can somehow suppress it. Frey finds a Ballow tree growing on the side of a cliff and tries to collect some resin but slips off the tree despite her being a magical parkour expert, falling to the bottom of the cliff with no way back up. And this is despite her magical parkour letting her get up several mountains on the way here. So of course her only choice is to head deeper into Tonto Prov's domain to find more trees. The Ballow Tree is right next to Tonta Prov's castle. Despite all of Frey's reluctance to do anything about the remaining Tontas, the game supplied the most contrived method to get her here. Maybe I can reason with her. She's the Taunt of Justice, right? Mm hmm Okay, so I'll ask her to stop the break, and everybody wins. Hey, can you stop being evil, Miss Insane All-Powerful Witch? Seems like a winning plan. Why didn't you think of doing that with the previous Tonta? So this makes a third courtroom scene, and for a second time using up all three strikes. They bear your lives. Pray, come. In judgment, be baptized. Tante Prov is responsible for dispensing justice throughout Athia, and she speaks in rhyme. I don't believe that's required for her role, she just likes doing it. Imagine a Supreme Court justice who delivers his verdicts in rap. A tante, slaughtered in her prime. She ordered her soldiers to attack innocent people. Children died. And have you proof to back this claim? Or do you merely run from the world? Frey has about as much proof for that as you have proof against her. Meaning none. Every court in this game has been incompetent. What the fuck are you talking about? No! 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 Quiet! 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 I am the asker of questions! You! are the answer that do you understand, consort of demons! Is there anyone who would like to defend this game? If you put forward a strong enough argument, I will pin it in the comments. She dies! What? I thought you said if I pled not guilty, she would kill me! I, uh, wait, I declare a mistrial! You don't get to do that. A judge is the only one who can declare a mistrial. The very same judge that proclaimed you guilty right after you pled innocent. Strangely, this works and Frey gets her wish for another trial. It's just that it's a trial by combat. When you consider how politically correct this game strives to be, it's kind of shocking and a bit insulting how it treats mental illness. Her daughter her lost. Her loving case. Daughter? What are you talking about? What do you think, you idiot? She spells it out for you and you still can't put it together. With Prov's death, you get her water powers, which include a new ability to glide across water, something you'll enjoy using precisely one time immediately after you get it on the game's sole body of water right outside Prov's castle. Frey's journey to get Ballow resin was a waste of time, because upon arrival back in Sepal, Robian is near death and there is nothing to be done. Bob was my last shot at getting out of this place, now I'm stuck in this insanity. Apologies if my father's death has inconvenienced you. Oh, you do not get to pull that. Auden had already assumed her father was dead when Frey found him. What's more, Frey made it clear that her reason for doing all this was to get home, which Auden agreed to. Killing Tantas doesn't seem to be helping much either. It's only made things worse. Why would you want her to keep doing it when so far there's been no positive result? People have lost so much. They can't just get out of this insanity. This is their home. My home. But, but don't let our grief and assured destruction get in the way of your self-pity. One of these people has to have the idea that Frey isn't the only one who could escape this land through a portal to Earth. You'd all be way better off there than fighting for this place. I've shed blood for this place. Our people welcomed you. They were frightened. Rightfully so. But they still welcomed you. They threw Frey in prison as soon as they saw her and didn't care at all about her until she killed one of the Tantas. 
people need each other. We help one another without complaint. It's the Athian way. Freeze killed two of the four Tondas and found your dad. She's under no obligation to rescue your entire world. Auden must be a reincarnation of that Final Fantasy princess who would just tell you, but thou must. I didn't have a mother or a father that wanted me or loved me. I don't think I'm alone when I say I don't feel anything for a character whose defining character trait is that she's an orphan. I certainly wouldn't accept it as an excuse for a person's terrible behavior. I don't give a shit because this place is not my home. Frey brought her East Coast attitude towards flyover country with her to the fantasy realm she's the save. Late with fucking pleasure. This game is proving that women hate each other the second they can't make each other agree with them. You're the Tantus Raya! The savior of Athia! Are you the Tantus Raya? You got the wrong girl. Well, it can sit there all at once. Olivia's not coming back. Yeah, screw children and cats. I'm in a bad mood. Since Cuff couldn't convince Frey to face Tonto Olas before facing your mother, Tonto Olas comes for Frey first. Frey finds herself back in New York, with a nice apartment and a seemingly great life this time around. I think I've witnessed the scene where the protagonist is offered a better version of reality for them to accept more times than I care to count. Everything else about this story is as deep as a fortune cookie, so no surprises when it throws every cliche it can at you. Everyone Frey could barely tolerate in Athia is now a close and personal a friend of hers here in New York. The only people from her own world who show up in this are the judge and oddly the gang members. Did Frey really have no one else in her life besides the judge and some female gang members that wanted her dead? Can you believe this weather, huh? Sitting outside in the middle of winter? <laughs> global warming. It's How about this global warming, huh? Sorry. Excuse us. This place is not what it seems. Wake up, Frey, before it's too late. Frey realizes what's going on after Cuff brings her a coffee and basically tells her what's going on. You now have to escape from the fake reality, which involves whacking large lamps while enemies assault you. And you have to do it several times. I'm not even sure what Olus is trying to do. If it was capture Frey inside a dream she would never want to leave, then that has already failed. Go ahead, jump. Hi. Hi. You would be better off. Isn't that what you believe? The Tondas have stooped so low as opposing kill yourself at Frey. I mean, who would miss you? Who cares? If you live or die. Well, nothing she said was untrue. Frey is a terrible person by all accounts. So this isn't so much a mind game as Frey rejecting the honest truth. I guess jumping to her death wouldn't have mattered because Olus drops her through a hole in the dream and she's just fine. What the? F that thing's supposed to be dead. Uh, now I can't hear anything. Really? What about now? Cuff? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Instead of fighting Olus, you fight this thing. And then immediately after you beat it, you fight this thing again. Only this time it mutes the audio so you can only hear Frey speak, but she can't hear Cuff. It's like listening to two people set up a Discord call. How exactly did Olus' illusion of New York transport Frey all the way from Sipal to Olus's realm? I thought all that was in her head. Frey discovers Olus on her throne already dead. Having exhausted herself performing illusory magic, bit of an anti-climax for sure but unintentionally hilarious because earlier she was the one telling Frey to just kill herself. Not to worry though, because Cuff, now whole again after bringing all four Cuffs together, reveals that he's actually a demon sent to destroy Athia. I've tried to piece together his plan that brought him here, and I've come to the conclusion that he simply got really lucky. First he waited around inside an old building in New York for 21 years, hoping Frey would finally come and pick him up, then he proceeded to argue with and antagonize her at every opportunity once back in Athia. The only thing he did was encourage Frey to go after the Tantas, but even there it was never his coercion that that succeeded. Frey went after the first out of revenge for a dead child. The second Tonto was just in the area and the third brought Frey to her. Gosh, you got me. That's what the Tontas were talking about. Oh, I want you to say it. Please say it. They weren't talking about me at all. Say it. Say it. It's you. You're the demon. Hustlers! Why did they I can feel my brain getting smoother as I listen to this dialogue. Turns out Cuff's real name is Susurus. I'm not sure if that's a biblical reference, but the name lines up squarely with meme culture. Frey must have activated her dodge roll invincibility frames during the cutscene, because she dodged while rolling forward into Susurus' attack. My powers! They're gone! <laughs> Your powers! They were never yours. Without me, you are nothing. 
You know, this betrayal by Susserus actually proves Frey's point of looking after herself and people only wanting things from her. So it's weird that it's after this that she's able to open up and decide to selflessly help others. The dragon that Frey fought at the beginning of the game shows up and saves her at the last second. Turns out the dragon is her mother, and she must have known Frey was being influenced by Susserus back when they fought, but decided to drop Frey off in Sepal without so much as a warning about trusting the cuff glued to her arm. It was here that the game began to break down on me to the point where I almost couldn't finish it. Frey is brought to the Hall of Exposition Dumps by the dragon, and here she can learn the truth from the souls of the Tantas. To do so, Frey has to touch glowing white markers which activate JPEG images that cover the screen while one of the Tantas narrate, and every single time, the image would freeze and never go away when game control was returned. I could hear Frey moving around as I pressed buttons, but the image would remain until I turned the game off and reloaded. As the Tantas tell it, not so long ago they were at war with the Riddick, an enemy nation we never see in-game. Athia managed to defeat them, but not before in a last act of revenge, the Riddick sent a demon, Susurus, to destroy them, which they also managed to defeat. This war wasn't that long ago, so people would still have memories of it and the golden demon that tried to destroy all of them. I don't know why no one else in this world ever mentioned any of this to Frey before now. Susurus was broken to four parts, split between the Tantas, where it began to drive each of them mad. Strangely, Frey is never affected by madness like the Tantas were despite her situation being the same. You were able to stop us before Athia was completely destroyed. You have nothing to lament. We are so grateful for all that you have done. Okay, so why didn't you guys take your own lives before you went completely mad if you knew what it was doing to you? Well, one of you did kill yourselves, but it was incidental. You just said yourselves that you were happy Frey finally put an end to the harm you were causing. It is true, Rubian. I am with child. The next several minutes are devoted to explaining Tanta Senta and her pregnancy. She apparently got knocked up by someone from our world. He's never mentioned because that's apparently not important. I suppose the devs were hoping to save something for a sequel. That is what she will be. A guiding light for all Athia. A hope born of two worlds that she might bring our world together. How did you know your baby would be a girl? Do you have ultrasound in Athia? Can you hear it, Alfrey? Your father introduced me to this song. And I learned it so I might sing it to you one day. Frey's father introduced you to basic nursery rhymes? What kind of moves was he putting on you, lady? And one day, you shall know your father. Nope, never happening. All of Frey's powers are supposedly gone, except, I can't help but notice, for her magic parkour. I fear I have but a few days left. When I finally succumb, the corruption will engulf not just Pranus, but Janu as well. Tanta Sila knew exactly when she would be corrupted by Susurus and didn't do anything to stop herself. I know it's a hard pill to swallow to expect someone to take their own life, but when you are a magical witch that will destroy the land with corruption, killing all who live there and destroying the land you hold dear, the path seems clear to me. The Tantas sat back and let insanity wash over them and did nothing to stop it, not even warn their people beforehand. Once Senta was the last remaining Tanta and slowly losing herself to Susurus's corruption, she opened a portal to send her baby to Earth, strangely deciding not to send her daughter to her father, but drop her under the Holland Bridge of all places. Senta also included no way back to Athia when she did this, so she was essentially dooming her own world to ruin, with no one left who could save it after constantly talking her child up and even convincing the other Tantas to grant Frey their powers. At the last moment, Susurus slipped off Senta's hand and went through the portal with Frey. Then Senta transformed into a dragon through unexplained means. However, in the next few minutes she'll show that she can turn back into a human whenever she wants, but for some reason decided to never go back and get her daughter who's now in danger from Susurus. All the other Tantas went mad, and Senta wasn't immune to that but for no reason the curse of being a dragon and insanity no longer affect her. She can also still open portals back to Earth, so she could have gone to see Frey anytime she wanted but didn't. But only you can make that choice. This is a new trend I've noticed in games recently, where you're offered a chance to quit the game right before the conclusion. Considering how terrible this game is, it is a generous offer, but it still strikes me as odd that it exists. Why yes, I would like to leave the game I paid $70 for unfinished, if only you had offered it to me within Steam's two hour return window. The game started breaking down even more at this point. I would spawn in and not have the ability to attack, and once the game even hard crashed but remained playable, which I didn't even know was possible. Senta dies while fighting Susurus. I'm glad we managed to get that squared away so Frey can develop a new traversal power-up that she gets to use for this one fight. I'm willing to wager that you can immediately spot the problem with fighting Susurus. He's a bright yellow cloud, a metal bird set against a bright yellow background. At times, it felt like I was fighting the skybox. No. Oh, no. Frey is all the Tantas. I told you, she's just Rey from the new Star Wars trilogy. Rather than destroy Susurus, Frey turns him into a tattoo, even though wearing Susurus is what drove the other Tantas mad in the first place. But plot convenience means that won't happen to Frey. Hey, Homer. 
Sorry, it's been a while. Is Frey just saying all this in her head, or did she actually write her cat a letter? Just tell Judge Bird I took her advice, okay? I'm finally using my gifts to help others. You're asking your cat to deliver that message to a judge? Maybe Susurus is driving her mad. Listen, you ever get lonely? You just remember. Remember that you are not alone. Remember, if you ever feel alone, you're not. Frey figured out the cure for depression and anxiety that we've been searching for. All you have to do is be born with magical powers and be the destined savior of an entire world. Even if you find yourself with nowhere to turn and no clue where to go or what to do next, you can't give up hope. You might think there's nothing left to live for. That nobody cares. Why are you telling all this to a freaking cat? It's not going to understand these concepts. And there is no better sign that you're still alone and miserable than having only a pet to confide in. Damn! That is a lot of land for just one girl to cover. But it's a good thing I'm not doing it on my own. Isn't that right, Cuff? It's Van Brace. Who wouldn't want to wear and befriend your mother's killer on their arm? I'm seeing freaking dragons, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cuff.